Materials you will need are yarn, cardstock or construction paper, a printout of an image or template, you can also draw on a construction paper with marker, glue, scissors, and a craft or popsicle stick. Let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to glue your image onto a piece of cardstock. We're using cardstock because we wanna make it a little bit stir more sturdy so, so that we're, when we're gluing yarn and uh, yarn onto the paper, it will, it will be a little bit more sturdy to support the glue and yarn. It's okay that I just cut around the image and it wasn't precisely um, cutting out along the line. This will all be covered by yarn. So just as long as you kind of get an idea of like just the picture and gluing it onto the cardstock. These images, these templates can be found on AuntAnnie.com. You can just Google AuntAnnie.com and then uh, and we chol yarn art and you can find the templates there. So I had some yarn left over from the last time I did this program, so I'm gonna use that first. Um, you basically find any type of yarn. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply some glue, um, about four to six inches at a time. You don't wanna do a whole lot. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is the outline of the snake. I'm going to go ahead and do the outline here. So what I'm first going to do is follow the outline, the black outline that is on the image itself, and outline it in black yarn just to kind of keep, um, so that there's a difference between the inside of the image and the outside because we will eventually decorate the surrounding area that is not your image. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just wind it around and I'll apply glue as I, as I need to. You do want to be generous with your glue because you are essentially gluing yarn to paper. So you want to make sure that the yarn is supported as you go. This almost completely surrounded it perfectly. This was almost a perfect surrounding of the snake, this leftover. I'm not going to make my next color black, so I'm gonna cut off the excess. Otherwise, if you wanted the same color, you literally just could just place it down and then continue on with like another piece of string and, and glue it down. But I'm just gonna keep one thread, one row of black. So this I'm going to cut off. I think, I think what I'll do with this remainder of this little black, I'm going to actually paste it and it will be the eye of the snake. The next step would be to repeat the very same method that we used to surround it. This is basically going to be the next row. So you're going to place it in place and of course glue as you go, as you need it. And I'm basically just going to continue the process and just, um, the reason we're doing a half sheet is because the first time I did it, it was quite time consuming. If you wanted something that is a little bit, um, if you wanted something that wasn't going to take so long, you can do a half sheet and just kind of have one object. Another option would be to, um, just kind of inspired by the Weechul Yarn Art, just kind of paste different objects that might mean something to you. And then create this process with your object. You can also draw freehand. I'm just not a very good artist, so I just decided to copy and paste and print. You can do whatever you'd like. So again, I'm just repeating the process, just going around and adding glue as I need to. And what the whole idea is to basically make it as colorful as you can. I'm continuing on with my third color, and you can basically do as many colors as you'd like. You can stick to maybe a two-tone or monochrome. I mean, really, it's up to you. As you can see, I ran out of the green before I was done with my row. So I'm just gonna get more thread from the spool 
and to continue my snake. And I'm only gonna do a little bit because I'm not sure how much I'm gonna need for the rest of the snake. So there are some nooks and crannies that you won't obviously be able to kind of encircle it. So for little nooks and crannies like this one, I'm going to fill it with glue and tear off a piece, cut off a piece of my yarn and just kind of place it in there so that it is covered by yarn, but it's not, I think it'll be okay uh, with the end product. Same goes for here. I think what I'm gonna do is just glue here and then add just a line of my glue. So for moments where you do have enough to snake it around, no pun intended, I'm just gonna continue the, the um, I'm gonna continue my, my process, my method of basically snaking it around. This was kind of a looser yarn, so it didn't work as well as the others, but um, it's still a nice pop of color, so I'm gonna use it. Just kind of beware of the kind of yarn you're either buy, using or buying. Um, these looser kind of yarns, it's not ideal. <laughs> this blob is so blobby. Now that this has glue on it, I wonder if I can just twirl it until it's like tightened and it might stay in place, kind of like gel. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> It's glue. Y'all, I don't know if y'all know, but glue is so sticky. I'm gonna try to use my gel tactic again. A craft stick might actually help you to place the yarn where it needs to go. I just remembered I had it, so I brought it out. These little crevices are really hard. Just do the best you can. So we have applied yarn inside of our object. Now we are going to apply yarn outside of it as the background for the piece. I'd like to apply a black frame around the border for the border of the page of the paper so that everything inside is kind of contained, just kind of like the outside, the lining of the snake and then everything is inside. I will design the left side of the snake as an enclosed space in and of itself. So the design will be different in each quadrant of the snake background. If you're worried about this kind of um, yarn sticking out, you can always wait until the next day or whenever it's dry. So just wait until it's dry and then you can cut it the next day. We hope you enjoy making this Wizarika-inspired yarn art with us. Thank you for watching.